My great auntie had done a bit of research into our family history before and had loads of letters and stuff that my um, great great granddad sent back from the Boer War to his brother. That's amazing because there's not a lot on the Boer War, so this could be. No. Do you have copies of these letters? I have all the originals, yeah. Wow. They're very interesting, though. It's got about, in there, he talks about the generals being more like slave drivers than gentlemen. It's all hard marching for us. We did 36 and a half miles on two biscuits for the day, then had to wait off the wagons coming in at 10 o'clock at night before we got anything to eat. It is hard work, but we have it to do. I have, as you already see, been among the scrapping, but I have pulled through all right, and I hope I shall all the way through. I was at that do of the crungies, and it was a sight to see 4,000 boars surrender. He's got a medal for that, so it's quite interesting. And who was that? That was your... That was my great-great-granddad, Charles Clayton. This film is about Sir Thomas Arundel, who was an English aristocrat. He was born in 1515 and died on the 26th of February 1552 at the Tower of London. Sir Thomas was a rich young man. He lived in Wardour Castle in Wiltshire with his wife, Margaret Howard. She was sister to the Queen, Catherine Howard. He was also invested as Knight Bachelor on the 1st of June 1533 on Anne Boleyn's coronation. He was accused of being involved in the Cornish Uprising in 1549 with his brother John and was sent to the Tower of London. Him and his brother were both found guilty and were beheaded in the Tower of London. So Thomas was buried in the Chapel of St Peter, which is right next to the Tower of London. Hello, my name is Bola Solanke and I'm researching Nigerian culture with the Making History Project. Here is an example of Nigerian fashion. They have several different colourful prints in, the in which they make and do different designs. This dress is known as Adira, a local tie and dye print. One of my favourites, it's often referred to as a house girl gown with the traditional headwear. So mum, which part of Nigeria did you come from? Originally I'm from the Yoruba, but I cook food from all parts of Nigeria. Like what? Well, we have uh, the bean cake, which we call akara, or moi moi. That is, you take ordinary beans, you clean it, remove the skin, soak it in water to get it soft, then you blend it, you add onion, peppers, and anything you want to put to taste, apart from salt. There are many things about Nigerian culture that I found out I knew already and I have been brought up with, but not everything I did know. I couldn't really find out anything about my family as in Nigerian culture people tend to pass things down by word of mouth. So can you like, tell me how long ago you started this project? Um, I started about six months ago but previous to that my mum and um, my great cousin second route, I don't know, he started it as well, but then I've just carried on from there. Who started it first, Joel? My mum started on Ancestry and then found her second cousin on Ancestry who she didn't know actually existed, so wow. it's been great to actually talk to him and from this whole Ancestry finding out we went to a family reunion which was, it was really special. When was that? Um, it was at the end of October. So wow, and was, tell me a bit more about that we found out about people that were still around that we'd never met before, so we were able to catch up, talk to them. And you said you uncovered some story about the Titanic? Um, yeah, I went to um, my cousin's house, he's called Trevor. <laughs> we went to his house to interview him for my film, and then um, he randomly came out with the fact that I was related to someone on the Titanic who played the violin in the orchestra. So it was really special for me because I followed down his route from my granddad's side, who has been an influence to me as I play like the flute. And it was it was really special to find out that someone on the Titanic, he was in the orchestra, and it was it was really cool. Um, 
For the recording, could I just ask you your name and your date of birth and where you were born? Yes, it's uh, Natalie Harris. I was born on April 7th, 1976 in Orange, California. What are your favourite memories of your grandmother? Um, I think Christmas. We always used to go, um, my sister and I uh, were the oldest two of 21 grandkids. So um, I would go, we would go and decorate the Christmas tree and wrap all of Grandma's presents for her. So that was my favourite. Uh, you mentioned political views when we were chatting earlier. How have they been passed down to your family? I think really just the strong women in my family. Um, not necessarily political views, but the open-mindedness of our political views. The fact that everybody has different views and we're able to talk about them within our family and respect each other's views politically and that it is important to understand that people have different views. Um, that is the type of attitude I think that was passed on. I think mostly, probably from my grandma actually. Now, you've obviously ended up in the UK. Mm -hmm. What part did travel have in your life at that point and how did that develop? In, well, I met my partner in America actually. And it's funny because Americans often don't have passports. We don't really go outside of the country. Most, um, most Americans don't. Uh, so I actually got my passport for the first time I came here. And I've been to Mexico, I've been to Canada, but um, other than that, it was uh, just here, really. I mean, how is living in Lincoln compared to the States? It is different, but I do enjoy it. I really, really like it. We've really settled in well. Um, the kids are getting on well in school, and we sort of we enjoy the traditions and the, um, the history here. There's a lot more history here than there is in America. So I really enjoy seeing how, when you look at the cathedral, it's been there for ages. You look at the castle and it's, you know, it's been there longer than any building I'd ever seen before. Was there anything you found out to be true that wasn't true or the other way around? Well, um, growing up, my mom always thought that we were related to um, the gentleman who made Coca-Cola. And then he was related to um, a war general in the Civil War. And growing up, that was always the story, and everybody always, you look him up and you think, oh yeah, we're related to him. And then looking into it, we aren't related to him. Um, but it's funny because, like I said, my, my mom always thought that. We always thought that, so everybody walks around. Even Truman, my son, um, tells everybody that we're related to, oh, this Coke, yeah, we're related to him. So now we found out, and actually at the time, Madison was really devastated. Uh, when we thought, oh, you know, we don't have much going on. And then I spoke to my aunt, and actually, we are related to um, someone famous, so that was exciting. Could you tell us who that is? Um, yeah, actually, um, Laura LaPlante. She is a silent movie star. She was in The Cat and the Canary. She did over 100 um, silent films and then crossed over into speaking films. And she's actually on um, IMDb, so that was fun. How did you find out about that? Um, my aunt told me, actually. She has been doing a lot of research um, and had her own ancestry um, she had a family tree in that, and she told us that it was my um, grandma's cousin. What inspired you about doing your family history? Actually, Madison's um, passion for it helped me quite a bit. She, um, so she asked us questions and got us involved, and when she started that, we sort of got excited about finding out things that we didn't know or things we thought we knew weren't true, and that was really fun. Actually, it was really, really funny how much we enjoyed the fact that what we had heard wasn't true and sort of found out that that wasn't really what was important. It was just finding out who really was in our history and where we really did come from. How much time have you spent researching? Um, we spent a decent amount of time over the last few months. Um, in the beginning, obviously, we spent quite a bit more time, um, but we have spent probably a couple hours a week since the project started. What do you think is the most valuable thing that you've learned? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I think that, again, just because we don't have a lot of famous people or a lot of interesting things in our family, that you sort of look back and remember who is your family and why family is important to you. I think that the most interesting discovery that I've made is about my third cousin, Laura LaPlante. 
She was a silent film star in America during the late 1920s. The 1920s in America followed the suffragettes and the suffragettes movements and women getting the vote. During this time, women were exploring their newfound freedom and becoming more confident. Now, you might be wondering how this ties into Laura's role. Well, the women of the film industry in this time period played a big part in this development. A lot like girls nowadays do, women strive to be like the actors that they saw in these motion pictures. They aspired to achieve this new, modern attitude and look. The films and actresses such as Laura Starden served as a sort of instruction manual to the ordinary woman. The actresses in these films portrayed these independent, unique, and even glamorous characters. They became icons, inspirations for the women of America. Women are not just background characters in a man's world, and, the 1920, and in the 1920s, they began to realize this. It was actresses like my third cousin, Laura, that brought about the, in my opinion, much needed change in women. Who knows where we, where we, as women, would be today without the influence of the film industry and some of these, for lack of a better word, risky directors and actresses. I especially enjoyed learning that Laura was around my age, of 15, when she broke into the film industry, because I am into drama myself, and it gives me hope for my own aspirations. Now, for some fun facts about Laura. She was named one of the Western Association of Motion Picture Advertisers, WAMPS, Baby Stars of 1923. During the 1920s alone, she appeared in over 60 films. She also worked with many other stars of the time, such as John Wayne, Betty Hutton, Alan Hale, Bing Crosby, Tully Marshall, and James Craig. She tried her luck in England in the early 1930s. She was married to an American film director from 1926 to 1934, when they got divorced. She went on to marry Irving Asher, a producer, from 1934 to his death in 1985. She lived to the age of 91. There is a road named after her in Agora Hills, California. She played violin. She was Universal's top star of her time, and her middle name was Isabel. Discovering my relation to Laura LaPlante and learning all about her life has really inspired me want to want to do something with my life, to want to be remembered. I first got involved in the Making History Projects because history has always been one of my favorite subjects. And what better history is there than your own? I suppose the prospect of potentially appearing on television certainly didn't hurt. I guess that I just found it really intriguing that I could begin to uncover things about myself and where I come from, what makes me who I am, and see others do the same. All in all, I really enjoyed this project and learned a lot about myself and made some very interesting discoveries about my own thoughts, hopes, and dreams. I think that finding out about your history is something everyone should try, because you never know what you'll find. In conclusion, no matter what you find, remember, it's not a competition, it's not about who had the most famous family. It's about how your family has influenced you and your life and what it means to you.